I'm going to get a lake house gifted to me, and it's just because my father-in-law. I'm going to turn him to a grandpa because I'm about to have a baby. Well, you know what? It gets really sticky from there because my sister-in-law says, Wait a second, Grandpa, that heir is not yours. OP is a dirty cheater, and I demand you do a DNA test. Guys, spoiler alert, I've never cheated in my life. So you know what I'm going to do to this wicked witch? I'm going to make sure she gets exposed. Hey guys, I'm Daniel, and I needed a place to vent because I'm just straight up frustrated. Everyone close to me knows what's happened, but no one knows the things that led up to it. So basically, my sister-in-law, Amanda, has always hated me. She has beef with me over something that happened in high school. Amanda and I have had our ups and downs, but time, you know, this time she went too far with it. She really surprised me with the hatred she filled with me. She brought my son into this and I'm not liking it at all. My husband James and I recently welcomed our baby boy. Everyone's happy about it and it's just been amazing. Currently, we're living in the same house as my in-laws and I'll explain why later on. My father-in-law just announced that he would be giving me his lake house as a gift for becoming a new mother. So, Amanda told me, my in-laws, that they should not give me the lake house because I cheated on James. And the baby was not his, and she then told me to get a paternity test and prove it. She proceeded to tell my mother-in-law that I cheated on James with my high school boyfriend, Eric. I don't understand why she's holding grudges and making all these huge false claims. Well, Amanda has never been happy with me being her sister-in-law. James and I started our relationship after I moved back to town because I wanted to be closer to my father after my mom died. I had told James from the start that we would take time to get to know each other, but we're ultimately dating to marry, and I don't want to fool around. James felt the same, and after six months of being together, he moved into my apartment, and three months after moving in, we decided that it was time to get married. Our families were delighted, but there was one miserable person. Amanda. Amanda was against our relationship from the start, but she never thought our relationship would even last. We could clearly see that Amanda did not like the fact that we were getting married. Not that she expressed her unhappiness, she didn't react to the news at all. Now, coming to the question of why she hated me so much, it's over something that happened during high school and I would like to give you a fair warning. Some of it was actually my fault. Amanda has a crush on Eric, but since he started liking me instead of her, she thought that I quote, stole him from her. Amanda wanted to get back at me, and I was supposed to give uh, the town mayor a presentation. Amanda switched the file to a presentation filed with, well, very inappropriate images. We couldn't find the real file at such a short notice, and the mayor did not have time for it, and I did not get the opportunity to speak, and I went home absolutely gutted. Eric did some digging and discovered that it was Amanda who messed up the file. I acted like I didn't know the truth for a couple of weeks. She was part of the school drama and they were performing in a competition. I gave her a drink an hour before her performance, but it was mixed with laxatives. I thought it would be the perfect revenge and she would miss out on the performance because she would be too busy in the toilet. I was shocked to see her performing on stage and assumed that it did not work. Unfortunately, right in the middle of her solo song, she farted and excreted in her underwear. I did not think that would be the outcome because people don't involuntarily do it after taking lax and I honestly didn't want that to happen. Everyone heard it and Amanda had to rush out due to obvious reasons but luckily they had a backup. I went to the bathroom and offered to help Amanda and I promised that I wouldn't tell anyone because I felt so bad. I got her a change of clothes that I had in the locker and everybody thought that she farted but no one realized what she did. I told people off for making fun of her after that and I supported her because I felt so bad. I felt really guilty so I let slip to her that I gave her laxatives. Amanda got mad at me and started to physically fight right in the corridor. I had a really good relationship with the teachers and Amanda told the teachers what I did. They asked me whether I did it and I didn't own up to it. The teachers actually believed me and Amanda got suspended for a week. She wasn't allowed to come near me after that and I just thought Amanda would be a little mature about it and would have forgotten it, but no, she didn't. 
She hates me to the core for what I did, and I asked her to forget what happened in high school and apologize. She tells me that nothing could have reversed the damage I had done in high school. I completely understood her at that point. I was wrong. I had no excuse for it, and I told her to take all the time she needed, but I would be there for her when she needed it. See, I made several attempts after that, but she did not appreciate it. I haven't told James what happened, and she doesn't want to either because it's too embarrassing to say. Amanda made my life hell during my pre-wedding and wedding, and James and I had booked the venue for our wedding in early spring. A month after our engagement, Amanda announced that she's pregnant. She was pregnant with my childhood neighbor, Dave's child, and they decided to get married. Dave's mom and my mom were really good friends, so I've been on good terms with the family, and I know them well. Amanda expected us to move our wedding date so that she could get married before being heavily pregnant. So, we just requested that she gets married a little earlier because there were four months left until our wedding and she had plenty of time. She refused because the arrangements would be hectic for her and she needed more time. The venue would not even give us a partial advance. Um, Amanda started throwing tantrums and my in-laws would not say anything to her because she was pregnant. And she does things like this, skips meals, and be negligent. For the sake of her health, we had to agree. We offered to give our venue to her since we weren't getting a refund. She happily accepted it, and we assumed that she would pay for the venue and give us back the advance. But after a month of waiting for our money, I asked her. And she argued and told me that I should not be entitled to the advance because it was not her choice of venue, and that the money would have gone to waste anyways. James decided to let it go and told me that it could be a wedding gift from Amanda. James paid for the whole venue for our wedding and I didn't even ask him to. But he insisted because he felt bad about the whole drama. Amanda's wedding was a disaster and she argued with Dave throughout the wedding because she suspected him of cheating at his bachelor's party. Even though he assured her nothing happened and I just felt sorry for Dave for having to deal with her for life. My father-in-law's in a wheelchair. So she asked James to give her away because my father-in-law would ruin the aesthetics. His face dropped when Amanda said that and the poor guy did not say anything but was visibly upset that he could not get away with his daughter. I was shocked at the amount of entitlement that she had just because it was her wedding and she was pregnant. Well, Amanda was such a pain to deal with and I just felt sorry for poor Dave. She made everything about herself with her baby and... She even planned her baby shower on the day of my rehearsal dinner <laughs> and argued that the timing was different so it was okay. I was sick and tired of her obnoxious behavior. Well, the day of the wedding came and everything was going perfectly. According to me, Amanda gave some juice before I walked down the aisle and it tasted weird, but I guess that's how it tastes. They were laxatives, and I had the urge to go to the toilet right in the middle of my vows. I said, excuse me, I need to go to the bathroom. Everybody was shocked, and I could not wait. And My maid of honor followed me to the toilet and held my dress up while I relieved myself. It was oh so embarrassing. Amanda and her friends made fun of me for going to the bathroom during my vows in front of everyone. I knew that she had given me something, but I could not be so sure. So I asked one of my bridesmaids to check her room. Yep, sure enough, laxatives. This idiot chased my wedding out of all days to get revenge? After the wedding, I went to talk to her about it. And she owned up to doing it because she wanted to take revenge for what happened. She then played the pregnancy card to get her, herself out of it, and I just told her to stop the childishness and move on. But she still kept trying and kept being hostile towards me. Amanda gave birth to a daughter shortly after, and then two years later, she had another baby girl. I've tried hard to be on good terms with her, but she's never made any effort to do so. Over the years, my in-laws and I have developed a very strong bond. My mother-in-law would often contact me and would rely on me for my help. I was also getting gifts from it on every occasion, and James and I have a very harmonious marriage, you know. But I can't say the same for Amanda and Dave. Amanda started to get a little jealous that I was constantly at the center of attention. Even with Amanda's mother-in-law, who had known me well since I was a kid, Amanda started to meddle in our lives and started to instigate my mother-in-law against me. 
She would constantly just portray herself as being better than me because she had two children and I hadn't even had one. James and I did not want to have a child because we weren't financially there. My mother-in-law asked James and me to move in with them because it was hard for her to take care of my wheelchair-bound father-in-law. We couldn't afford to buy or rent a house in that area, so we moved in with them. We decided to take up the first floor of the house, and my in-laws stayed on the ground floor. Everything was going well, despite Amanda trying her best to instigate everyone against me and show people that she was better. I had strong reasons to hate her after the things that she was pulling off. After four years of marriage, we finally decided that it was time to have a baby. Everyone was over the moon when I announced my pregnancy, and my mother-in-law was so excited, I recently delivered a baby boy. The pregnancy was very tough, and it involved a lot of complications, and I'm just really glad that it's over, and that my little boy is very healthy and happy. My baby is now two weeks old, so to celebrate, my father-in-law threw a party today. Amanda's family, my father, and some of our close friends were invited. The party atmosphere got a little tense when my niece, Amanda's daughter, whom I have a lot, I love her. She touched my baby's face with grubby hands. I told her not to touch the baby, and Amanda got aggressive after that and started an argument. I explained that I did not mean to sound like that, but she made a huge issue about it. My father-in-law asked everyone to gather when we were all having dessert. He told us that he had an announcement to make, guys. My father-in-law had decided to gift me his lake house for giving him a grandchild. Despite the complications of my pregnancy, I was stunned and delighted. He knew how much I loved visiting the lake house with my husband, and I told him that it's such a big gift, and I don't know if I should accept it from him or not, but he told me that it's mine now. It was an emotional moment where everybody was praising my efforts for the family. My father-in-law ceremoniously handed over the keys to me, but Amanda took them from his hands and told him not to give him the keys. She then proceeded to tell everyone that the baby belonged to Eric and that I should get a paternity test. Amanda said that she was absolutely sure my son was Eric's and that I did not deserve anything. Everyone told her to shut up, stop being such a nuisance. There was a lot of tension in the atmosphere, so my father-in-law decided to end the party. I was supposed to announce my son's name to everyone, but Amanda spoiled the whole party mood. She made such a huge allegation against me, and James did not say anything in front of everyone because he knew Amanda would cause more drama. But he's furious, and he'll have a word with Amanda tomorrow. My mother-in-law and Amanda were having a chat in the corner right there at the party, and I don't know what she told her. But my mother-in-law has been acting cold since then, and I don't know what I did to deserve this. Please, readers, give me some insight on how I can handle this. Update number one. Hello, everyone. It's Daniel again. Thanks for all the comments and interactions. For all of you who are hating me for something I do as a kid, I think everyone should move on and just forget it. It's not like I don't feel bad about it or don't realize that what I did was wrong. By the way, Amanda did get back at me uh, for that wedding. and You know, we're even. There's absolutely no reason to hate me. Some of you commented that I should have never been living in my in-law's house, and I agree. Well, by the time uh, I called for it, a lot of you advised me not to get the test done for my own self-respect. But I feel that my relationship with my mother-in-law is slightly more important. James went straight to sleep that night because he had taken care of the baby all day while I slept. I was anxious about whether he was mad at me or he believed Amanda, but he was just tired and didn't have the energy to talk. He spoke to me in the morning about the evening and told me not to take Amanda seriously and that there's no need to take a rest. Huh. He promised me that he would be dealing with Amanda very strictly, and we went down for breakfast and Amanda was at home. My mother-in-law was visibly upset. I asked her what was wrong, and Amanda had shown pictures of me and Eric together to my mother-in-law. I was at the mall with James doing some snooping, and I was shopping, <laughs> window shopping, and we happened to bump into Eric. James had gone to the bathroom, leaving Eric and I alone, and... I just asked Amanda how she had the pictures. She made false claims that she had been following me around and that she had caught me red-handed, and guys, I was astonished at the bullcrap that she was spewing. The nerve this woman has, I tried to explain the situation to my mother-in-law, obviously, but she just was not listening. 
My mother-in-law gave me an ultimatum. Either do the paternity test and prove I'm innocent or leave the house along with my baby. I was in tears because she just refused to believe me. And my father-in-law tried to defend me, but my mother-in-law simply was not going to listen. James knew I was innocent and he was trying very hard to tell his mom what happened, but she just wasn't listening to a word. James told me that getting a paternity test was absurd and that he would be moving out immediately. I told him that the parents needed us and I would just get one for the sake of it, but he said that it was unnecessary and that they did not have any right to tell us what we needed to do. James is currently house hunting and my mother-in-law is being cold towards me. It's become a difficult thing to live in in the same house as them and I think it's best that we just move out. Thanks to Amanda, my relationship with my mother-in-law is ruined. I don't know who believes me and who doesn't, but by now, half the town probably knows I cheated on James with Eric. I just don't know how to deal with Amanda, and I don't know how to undo this. James would rather break ties with his parents, but I feel that I won't be able to prove I'm innocent until I do. Well, I tried to talk to my mother-in-law, but she wants me to get the paternity test or leave. She's been cold towards my baby, too. She's trying to convince James not to leave, and my father-in-law's trying to defend me. But nothing is fixing this messed up situation. Guys, do you think that I should do the paternity test, or should I just leave it and move out respectively? Update number two. Hey guys, thank you for the supportive comments. A lot of you told me to get a paternity test just so that I could prove that I was right and Amanda was being stupid. But most of you were uh, of the opinion that I should take the test. I chose to take the test so that I could prove to the people who doubted me that they were wrong. My mother-in-law proved that blood is thicker than water by believing Amanda, and I wanted to make her repent and tell her that she was so wrong for this. I tried to convince James to let me take the paternity test or rub it in mom's face that I'm not a cheater. I told him that we could move out after that, and it took a lot of convincing. But James finally agreed when I told him how important it was for me, and it's no joke taking a paternity test. It was kind of pricey, I'm not gonna lie. I kind of wanted to get new shoes with the money. I took the paternity test, and obviously it was in my favor, and I gathered everyone around me and told everyone that I had done the test. I told my mother-in-law that I would reveal the results, but on the condition that Amanda gets it done too for both her children. My mother-in-law was quick to agree without thinking, but Amanda's face went pale. I gave the reports to my mother-in-law and passed everyone a photocopy just to add to the drama. My mother-in-law was glad and relieved to see that the child belonged to James. She then acted like nothing happened, so I gave my mother-in-law a piece of my mind and just simply expressed how upset I was that she did not believe me. After telling everyone how I felt about the situation, I told them that James and I would be moving out with our baby after we found somewhere to live. My mother-in-law was so shocked and started sweeping, crying, and weeping that I shouldn't leave. Well, I told my mother-in-law that she should keep her promises and tell Amanda to do the paternity test too since she doubted me. My mother-in-law, well told Amanda to get the paternity test, but Amanda flipped and said that she said it all as a joke, but it was my mother-in-law's fault that she's made me do the test. Amanda said that she was not going to participate in any of this crap and that I was stupid for actually getting a paternity test. Amanda blamed the whole thing on her mom and argued that she didn't want to take the test because she was innocent. Amanda then left the house with Dave and her in-laws and my mother apologized to me for her behavior. James told her that her decision to move out was final and that she should urge her own daughter to take a paternity test instead of judging someone else's. My mother-in-law was sorry for her behavior, but it was too late. It was. My father-in-law shouted at Amanda and my mother-in-law for their behavior, and my father-in-law then handed over the keys to the lake house to me. He said that he never doubted me, but his wife stopped him from forgiving them to me. He urged me to take them and apologize for his wife's behavior. So, my mother-in-law told us that she can't live without her grandson and she needs support to take care of my father-in-law. James would not listen to her at all and told her that he would not be the changing uh, decision after the humiliation and pain that she caused them. Well, my mother-in-law asked me to convince James to stay, but I told her that I would only do that if Amanda took the test. 
My mother-in-law kept blowing up Amanda's phone to tell her to take the test, but she just wouldn't budge. She even offered to pay for it and bribed her with gifts, and I thought that Amanda would have broken by now and taken the test with the amount of bribes my mother-in-law was offering. There's something definitely peculiar about this. Why isn't Amanda taking the test and getting it over with? I was starting to have my doubts about the whole situation. Nothing in this town remains a secret, and I will find out the truth. I've started to suspect that Amanda straight up cheated on Dave and the kids aren't his because of the way that they look. I mean, I love my nieces a lot and they're very sweet children and I hope my doubt is not true and they are in fact Dave's kids. But I've got to the bottom of this one way or the other or else why would Amanda be so hesitant to take a test? I'll keep you guys completely updated. Update number three. Hey everyone, first of all, thanks for all the supportive comments. To that one person who said that I was taking the test just so that I could get to the lake house, well, that wasn't really my intention, but believe me what you want. For those who asked about my baby, he's fine and really doing well. I promised that I'd give you updates and here it is. It's not that surprising, but I would like to warn you that this does not really end very well. You know, I did want to get a bit of dirt, some dirt on Amanda, but I didn't know how to. So I suddenly remembered that Amanda fell out with her really good friend Cass just a couple years back. They hate each other now, and I contacted Cass and asked her about Amanda. It was a very awkward conversation, and Cass was ready to give me dirt right away. She revealed that she's been cheating on Dave ever since they started dating and that her first baby does not belong to Dave. It was nothing surprising because I knew something was up. Cass even had pictures of Amanda with another guy and she had her engagement ring that Dave gave her. Right there in the picture. How could Amanda be so shameless? I mean, come on. I thanked Cass for the valuable information that she gave me. and I just decided to play the game she played. She went to my mother-in-law to show her pictures, so I went to her mother-in-law. I showed her the pictures of Amanda with the other guy and suggested that she should ask Amanda to do a paternity test. Her mother-in-law suggested that maybe they could just be friends. I told her that I hoped it was true, but since she had asked me to do the test, she should do it too. Amanda's mother-in-law forced Amanda to take the test. And Dave agreed with her too because he felt that she should do it if I did it. Amanda did not want to do the testing, so Dave went ahead and did the test without Amanda's consent. I gathered everyone around the day of the test results, and I only thought that her first daughter was in Dave's, but the results shocked everyone. Both the children did not belong to Dave. Amanda had cheated on Dave, and Dave literally started crying after discovering the truth. Amanda started weeping and started to defend herself. Amanda's mother-in-law was furious, so she slapped Amanda, and her mother, my mother-in-law, slapped her too. <laughs> Dave asked Amanda to leave his house. She begged everyone to let her stay, but no one took her in, and Amanda had to leave the house with her kids. Dave rightfully sent Amanda a divorce notice, and Amanda's getting nothing from Dave since she cheated and the kids aren't his. Amanda wept and begged Dave to not do this to her, give her a chance, but there is no way that he was taking her back. He told her that they only married because she was the mother of the children, but didn't have any other reason to deal with her since the children weren't his. Dave told her he was going to divorce her anywho, because she's a pain in the butt, but now it's so much easier for him to do so. Let me know what you think.